Hi guys, it's Karen from Yarn Tail. I'm coming to you from Chicago where I live with my husband, our three kids, and our dog Max. This is a knitting podcast where I talk about what I'm working on, what I want to be working on, and things I probably should be working on but I'll never get around to. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. If you're new around here, thanks for stopping by. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad you came back. So it's only been a week since the last episode, so I don't have a ton of stuff, but I do have a little bit of knitting to show. So let's get right into it. So this is my one and only finished object for this time. This is the Uppsala hat by Kate Osborne. It is part of the Kelborn Woolens Year of Bulky Hats collection, uh, where each month they release a free pattern for um, a hat that's knit out of bulky weight yarn. And if you remember, Kelborn Woolens initially released their Year of Hats collection um, a couple years ago now. And I knit the June hat, um, which is just this, it's a lot of purling. Some people knit it inside out, but it's purling with some slip stitches um, and you just alternate colors. It's really kind of addicted to knit. And I liked it so much that I reversed the colors and knit it twice. Although weirdly, the lighter version came out significantly smaller and I knit it second. So I don't know what that means. Maybe I, I don't know. I didn't change needles or anything, but like when I put it on my head, it's, it's pretty tight. And so I usually end up wearing the darker one because um, it's just a little bit of a better fit. But my kids wear this one a lot. And in fact, they probably would like it if it weren't black and white. They, they much prefer wild and crazy colors. So um, if you're looking for a fun knit, uh, this is also a good one. And so it is a super quick knit. Um, I knit this ostensibly for my daughter or one of my daughters, um, but it turned out kind of big. I don't really gauge swatch for hats, so it might be too big. I don't know. My youngest daughter uh, likes slushy hats, so maybe she'll wear it anyway. Or um, I might have just made myself a new hat. <laughs> so this hat um, is really cool. It features these little daisy stitches. It's hard to tell because the yarn I chose is really busy. Um, but there are these little daisy stitches that are really fun to knit. I had never done that before. Um, I knit this out of a gradient that I dyed myself. So um, I did two more so you can kind of see how they come up. Um, this one is bluish, like it looks similar on the outside, but it's a lot more purpley on the inside. Um, but this was kind of the same idea. It's like dark blue on the outside. And then as you knit up, it gets lighter and lighter. And I just made a yarn pom-pom to try to use up as much of the lightest blue color as I could. Although we did have a little nugget left. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But I've got kind of a, a bluish purplish one here. And then um, a pink one here. Um, I think I'm going to have to knit up a pink one for the other daughter because... Um, it can't make something for one without making something for the other. So um, I'll have to get on that. But this is a super quick knit. Since it is bulky weight yarn, I knit this hat in about three days while doing other things. And I'm a pretty slow knitter. So if you're one of those lightning fast um, ladies who's been knitting for 40 years, I bet you could knock this out in a weekend. <laughs> really fun, really cute. And I think it looks good when it's on. Um, you could also knit it in the other direction and have it start light and go dark if you just pulled from the center. So I mean, maybe. Um, I did put a couple of these in the Etsy shop just because how many gradient hats uh, do the Kawashimas really need? <laughs> We're about to find out. So if you want a gradient, they are available for you. Um, or we're just going to have all five of us in matching gradient hats, which is, you know, it's, it's a valid option. It's a valid option. So that is my one finished object. Um, I don't have any more, but I do have a bunch of whips, things that I'm working on. So you may recall, I started the Vancouver Fog Fingerless Mitts. This is also a free pattern on Ravelry. It's hard to see because of course I picked really dark navy yarn that totally obscures the cabling. <laughs> so, um, but it is just stockinette on the back and then there's a cabled panel on the front. This is the left mitt, so hang on. Can I put it on without pulling out my needle? Nope. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping stitches already. Hang on. Wait, no, don't do it. Okay. Oh, that's because I put it on backwards. Okay. Take two. Na, 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 na. Okay. This is the left mitt. 
So I just um, started the thumb gusset. There's a little bit of a gusset here. So my thumb stitches are in waist yarn. Um, and then at some point, I think you pick them up and knit a little bit further. I'm not that great at reading ahead in patterns. So everything's a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> But I made the extra long version where you do the chart twice and then uh, start your thumb. And so I have, I think, one more pattern repeat and then some ribbing at the top to finish it off. And I'll do whatever you have to do for the thumb. But these are worsted weight, so it actually knits up pretty quickly. Um, I'm knitting them on DPNs. Um, I actually really like DPNs. I know a lot of people have really strong feelings about <laughs> um, double pointed needles and how they're just sort of, they're just, they're no good. <laughs> the first time I attempted small circumference knitting was with double points. So I think whatever you start with is kind of what you become most comfortable with, or at least that's what happened to me. So I've never really caught on to Magic Loop and I always just go back to the DPNs um, because that's what I know best. But the cables are working out okay. I think I might have messed up a little. I mean, it's not, I think I might have turned one, did one row a little wonky because I took a picture for Instagram and then I looked at it and was like, oh, I don't really like that. But it's way back down here and I'm definitely not dropping down in cables. And let's face it, it's navy yarn and they're for me. So nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna know. Um, but I'm just about um, trucking along with the left hand mitt and then I'll, have to try to immediately cast on the right one so that I don't have one mitt in a drawer that sits there for three years. <laughs> Not that that's ever happened to me, right? Um, I, I do have actually a pile of single mittens and single socks and single mitts. Um, so hopefully that is not the fate of these. I'm knitting it out of a skein of worsted weight yarn that I over dyed with navy because um, the color that I tried to make it was just really terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> Navy um, fixes a multitude of sins. So I think it's working out. So that's that. I got my hat, I got my mitts. Okay, my next work in progress is a shawl and I cast it on for the Across the Pond 2022 Cal um, that is hosted by Fernanda of Little Monkeys and Me and Ruth of Ruth Loves to Knit. So if you don't watch either of their knitting podcasts, you definitely should. They're both fantastic um, and they're both lovely human beings. So um, they are hosting a shawl cal where everybody's knitting beautiful shawls. And so not to be left out, <laughs> I cast one on. This is the um, Surge shawl by Lisa Much. And it actually was suggested to me by uh, someone who watches the podcast. So if this is you, thank you so much. Um, I was not familiar with this pattern and I love how it's knitting up. So I kind of went for a low contrast vibe because I feel like sometimes when I'm choosing my colors, I get a little bit overzealous and it gets a little bit of a circus vibe. <laughs> so um, I just kind of stayed low contrast um, because I think I'll get more wear out of it. So I'll pop up a picture of the finished shawl so you can kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like when it's done, but it is a, what is that called? I think it's called a crescent shape shawl. Maybe it's not. It's like long and skinny um, and narrow. And um, it kind of goes from this portion here um, outward. So I'm not doing a great job of showing this. Okay. So I'm knitting it out of um, Madison and State Fiberco in their colorway First Light, which is this beautiful lavender color. Just, I cannot get enough of this lavender color. I recently knit this Pearl Soho um, ribbed hat uh, out of, it, it's not identical, it's like more of a, a little bit of a different tone, but it's still that light purpley color. I just love, I would wear everything in it. <laughs> I want hats, I want sweaters, I want shawls, I want all the things. Um, in this color here. So this is Madison and State Fiber Co. First Light. Um, they are local to me and they're, um, they're both fabulous. <laughs> so I would highly recommend checking them out. And um, the second color is one that I dyed myself. Um, it's like a pinky color um, on an 80-20 fingering base. This shawl only takes two skeins of fingering weight. So it's totally achievable. I'm fairly hopeful that I'll be able to finish the 
shawl in time to submit it for the um, for knit along prizes because um, my favorite thing to do is cast on for a knit along and then um, finish it a year and a half after the knit along ends. <laughs> It's okay, we can all participate in our own way. Um, but this shawl is really fun because it's mostly um, it's just going back and forth with short rows. So there, even though it is a really long shawl, most of the rows are not that long. You're kind of just going along these little wedges here. Um, I am using German short rows, even though the pattern is rapid turn, because I can never remember how to do a rapid turn without looking it up. And so um, German short, short rows, for some reason, have just stuck in my brain. So they're my preferred method for short rows, but I think anything would work. Um, other things of note. So you're supposed to knit this on size eight needles, but I just went down to a six, primarily because I don't know where my size eight needle tips are, but also I've become kind of a loose knitter. So I figured it would probably work out that I, I don't usually gauge swatch for shawls, um, but I figured if I just went down a couple sizes, I'd probably be spot on. So what else? Okay, so this shawl is really stripy and you're kind of going back and forth between color A and color B. And at first I was carrying the yarn up, like across these small sections, I carried the purple yarn right there and it, then it started getting longer and it made these weird little loops. See that? That's not good. These little loopies where I was carrying the yarn up. And so I was like, well, I don't like that. <laughs> So then I started breaking the yarn and rejoining it when I got to the new section. Um, there were a bunch of people in Ravelry that said the edge is really tight and they added a bunch of yarn overs, but I didn't even think about that until um, like three rows ago. <laughs> so I haven't been doing that. I'm hoping it's not that bad. I mean, I figure it'll be big enough regardless of how stretchy it is. So I'm not too worried about that. I have also, in a shocking turn of events, I have been weaving in my ends as I go using the Stephen West Weave and Stephen method where you just um, twist the yarn tails around the working yarn and sort of do that for 10 to 12 stitches and voila, they're woven in. So hopefully I will not have 47,000 ends to weave in at the end after I've done all this breaking and rejoining of the yarn. So um, I'm shocked at my own personal responsibility. <laughs> I'm hoping it keeps up. Um, there is a first time for everything. So this is the Surge shawl. I'm really, it's been really fun. I'm done with section one and I believe there are four or five sections. So, um, you know, we're moving along, we're moving along. And then my last one, Work in progress. I believe it actually is my last. I'm just looking around here. Hang on. The Asala, the Surge, the Vancouver, the Mitts, the Hats. Okay, yeah. My last work in progress is a sock. And I know, like, who am I? Am I knitting socks now? I've only ever knit a couple pair of socks. And to be fair, I usually just knit one sock and then throw it in a drawer and never, ever do the second one. But I'm hopeful for this, for this one. So here's what happened. So I've been dyeing a lot of yarn, <laughs> too much yarn. And I have been dyeing mostly tonal yarns because that's what I like to knit with the best, like really solid colors with a little bit of variation in there, um, but kind of just variation of depth of shade from the same color. But then I was like, you know, that's no fun. I'm gonna try to do a variegated skein. So I, <laughs> you know, I like dove, down the rabbit hole of the internet and watched all the videos on how to make variegated skeins and it looked really easy and fun and, and cool. And so I got my dye stacks out and I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this pastel variegated skein with like um, variations of things that I, had knit, that I had dyed in whole skin. So like a little bit of the pink and I had a little bit of this blue or green. And then I had this like grayish blue one that I thought would be really pretty. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put them all in together, like pastel, and I'm gonna make this beautiful, really interesting variegated skein, like really relaxed and chill. Okay, well, that's not what happened. <laughs> so my skein of yarn came out really bananas. It was like, the colors were really saturated, and um, I'll show you a picture of it skeined up, because I just was like, oh, no, that's not what I was going for at all. I mean, at all. <laughs> I guess if you put the dye stack right on the yarn. I mean, when I say it out loud, it makes sense, but it didn't occur to me. Instead of 
putting it in a giant pot of water, it um, comes out a lot darker than just, you know, dipping it in like a giant kettle with water. So it was not at all a pastel skein. And so, and it actually came out super purple, which, you know, there is red and blue in there. So I guess, you know, shocker, but I was, <laughs> this whole dyeing experiment has been like one big surprise because I mean, I should really make some videos where I <laughs> explain what I'm going for and then show how incredibly far off of that goal I actually am when the skein is dyed <laughs> because most of what I'm going for is like not even close to what I end up with. Although what I end up with is pretty. So um, the skein that I made was pretty saturated and um, really bright and I'm like, oh, I don't like that at all. And I'm like, God, what am I even gonna do with that? Like, that's just, that does not look good. No one's gonna want that. So I was like, well, whatever. I'll just um, wind it up with my new ball winder <laughs> and um, see what it looks like. But then when I wound it up, I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, first of all, way purplier than I was expecting. I was sort of thinking there would be a lot of white still in there because I put, the color on various sections of the yarn, um, but it actually kind of covered the whole skein. There really wasn't any, there was no way to speak up. <laughs> what do I know? And so then I was like, well, shoot, I really wanna see what this looks like knit up. So I just cast on a pair of socks on my nine inch circular needles that I bought last year and used one time and then um, threw into my needle holder. But I really like how it's knitting up. This is just the cuff, so it's sort of hard to see, but I did start the stack in that portion and it is not looking so crazy. In the skein, it just looked like so busy and crazy and there was just so much going on that I was like, oh, I don't like that at all. I like it much more of a chill vibe, but once you knit it up, all those crazy colors kind of just blend together into like purple with some pops of whatever. <laughs> That's my official description. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm excited about that. And I forgot how much I liked using an iron circular needle. I only used it that one time when we were in the car coming back from Maine last year. And it's really fun. And it's way nicer than um, my DPN adventure that I have going on with this mitt. So I'm hopeful. I don't know what I'm gonna do as far as a heel. Um, I might just end up doing an afterthought heel because I am lazy <laughs> and it's easier just to knit a tube and cut it in afterwards. So I'll let you know how that goes. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the difference between what the yarn looks like in the skein and then balled up and then knit up. So I, again, I am not that great at predicting what things are going to look like when they're knit up. I think that's why I don't buy a lot of variegated yarns because I just can't picture it. But I, I'm, hopeful that uh that i'm gonna like that more than i think i will so that's fun so the only other thing i've got going on is um i did pop a bunch of i did dye up a bunch more yarn <laughs> so um and some of it turned out pretty great i think i did these gradients um which i think are fun they're not at all my colors but i did them for my kids um and let me tell you if you're in first grade this pink gradient is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen because my girls are just so excited about it. They're like, please make something with that. Can I have it? Can I have it right now? Which I love the enthusiasm. So um, this is one, this is the other, they're both bulky. And then I dyed up this pink, um, which has some variation of tone, like some of it's really light and some of it's really dark. Um, but that's what I'm using for the shawl. And again, it does not look like there's that much variation once you cake it up. I mean, in the skein, I'm like, woo, that's pretty, there's a lot, you know, like some parts are really light, some parts are really dark, but once you cake it up, like not really. <laughs> and then when I knit it up, there is some tonal variation in there, but like not in a crazy way, I don't know. So surprise again, this is just a, an episode full of surprises. And then I did this um, gray one that has a lot of blue in it. It's like grays and blues. Um, this is all on an 80-20 fingering base. And then um, I cannot get enough of this green teal color. 
I've dyed it up on worsted weight, not superwash, and then I just had to see how it would take on the superwash yarn, and I I love it. Like I love it so much. <laughs> I want to make. I'm gonna knit everything out of this color. Um, so there's that as well. I'm sure I'll do more because I just every time I'm like, what should I make? Ooh, this one. <laughs> um, and that is that. I don't think there's really much anything else. I hope you guys are doing well. I know this is like a lightning strike, super quick episode. Um, I would like to get together and do kind of a Zoom meetup. So I know I talked about doing it this weekend and I think we should definitely do that. I know this is really sort of late. So um, I'll post some stuff on Instagram and um, on, on the YouTube page here just to try to get the word out. But um, my husband's going to pick up my daughter from camp because it's already time for her to come home. Hooray, hooray. And so it's gonna be kind of quiet here with just me and my youngest. And so I was thinking maybe we could meet up on Saturday afternoon, like maybe one or two. Um, I'll take a look at my calendar and see what works best, but I'll, I'll pop a time up. And if you can stop by, please do. It'll be super chill and not at all weird, or I'll try it not to be weird. <laughs> we can just say hi and do a little knitting and, um, you know, have a little virtual meetups. Cause I think that'd be super fun. You guys have been so nice and it's just really fun to see what everyone's working on and put a face to a name because I don't know, it's been a while and it's, um, it's really humbling to see all the people that are willing to share their time in their community uh, in this little space. So I appreciate that. You guys, that's kind of all I've got going on. It's a pretty short episode this week, but I wanted to pop on and say hello and check in because the longer I let it go, the, the less I'm inclined to do it. So, um, Thanks so much for stopping by. If you'd like to connect on Instagram, my um, Instagram handle is not fancy knitter, K N O T. And it's the same on TikTok. If you want to hop over there, I have a bunch of um, random goofy videos that I put on TikTok. So if you like that kind of thing, hop on over. It's hard to translate all of the things to all of the different platforms. So um, I don't always post the same stuff on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube because I can't figure out how to get all the interfaces to work. So. <laughs> I need like tech support. I basically, I just need to let my 11 year old use more technology because he would be way better at it than I am. But we're sort of um, draconian when it comes to uh, social media for my middle schooler. So he doesn't get to do all the things. So he can't help me as much as I would like. <laughs> but maybe next year uh, he'll be able to do more things because um, he'll be a responsible middle schooler. Um, and what else? If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well, you guys, and, um, pop a comment or, um, let me know what you're working on. Happy knitting. Knitting on double point needle, double, double.